It's now the end of the 7am turn and just more manoeuvring again out on the left here. Uh, the, uh, the Austrians are moving up, looking mainly to cross these three bridges across the Ross Thaler Buck. The Hussars have already crossed over, um, they moved around the long way. And uh, sitting up on the right here, there's some more infantry in line, just deterring. Piol's cavalry, keeping them back, uh, whilst the infantry and artillery move up behind, looking for, I guess, a place to uh, to fight. Um, that river here, there's, <laughs> at the moment, this river, separating the two forces. And um, the Austrians would probably like to cross over here and then move into the open ground. Uh, alternatively, they can move around to the left here and move on to Russia. Now elsewhere, uh, we do have the third, the third cavalry division, who shifted slightly further to the north. Just um, they're very timid. Um, they are very worried about French artillery and French cavalry. I'm thinking maybe about moving them across this bridge here towards Plauen and moving to the open ground to more support the Austrians on the left and I may do that I'm then worried if I do that it kind of exposes the center here but in the center we do have the first curacies moving up uh, again keeping in mind their restrictions they cannot independently activate until three but again I think because they have an activated leader in their command moving with them and staying with them that they can Activate. So what I'd like to do is have these cuirassiers just uh, sitting out to the left of these allied positions to protect them, basically, um, just in case the French try to, to move out and uh, and harass them. Okay, if that happens, these units will all activate anyway. It's one of the um, the rules, so it's not too much to be afraid of. I just don't want the uh, all this artillery out here to be too exposed. And out on the right, of course, you've got the Russians and the Prussians just gradually moving up. Prussians now moving to the right of Strelin. They've almost at the Grosse Garden. They've moved through Gruner on the right. And the avant-garde of the Russians uh, getting pretty close to those French lines. They're now within range of their artillery. Yeah. So, as I said, end of the 7 o'clock turn. It is just on 7.20 a.m. Okay, we're at the end of the 7.20 a.m. turn now, and what's happening out here is uh, Mesco is leading uh, one line battalion from the 58th Infantry Regiment and one Austrian uh, Cavalry Regiment off to the uh, the northwest corner. I need to do this via the route von Mason at Chemnitz, which is way off in the top there. Um, I've pulled the cavalry regiment from the right-hand side here, so they're, they're regrouping around here, and then they'll make their way along this road. Uh, they have to do that by 10 a.m., uh, which I've realized is, is fast approaching, so they're gonna try and do that before Mesco does anything else. Uh, which puts a halt to this uh, Austrian advance here out on the far left. Um, they're pretty secure behind that, that uh, Ross Thaler back there. And to help out, I'm just bringing uh, this cavalry, this light cavalry, under Schneller out to the left. So they've begun to cross the bridge here, moving through the, uh, the orchards here, out to the west of Plauen to... Um, confront this French cavalry out on their left. I made a mistake here earlier with this artillery. They start unlimbered, so I've fixed them up. And I've also corrected the move of the first curious here. See, they weren't allowed to activate in full, so they're back to their starting positions and they won't activate until 3 p.m. Elsewhere, there's a lot of movement out on the right, and I think this is where we'll get the first... Uh, confrontation of the battle. The uh, 
uh, Prussians here are going to move through the Grosse Garden and to the right of the garden. And we have the Russian avant-garde moving up along the banks of the Elbe. And they will very soon strike that uh, French left flank. They are being fired at by uh, this artillery all around this area, including number one readout. Actually, no, they, they, they uh, didn't have line of sight. But um, no damage being inflicted just yet. Okay, so that is the situation at uh, the end of the 720 turn. Okay, at the end of the 7.40 p.m. turn, you can see the Russian avant-garde here on the far right have uh, just begun to exchange fire with the French out here on their left flank. This is out in the east, so i uh, not really sure how to approach this assault. I've just sent out some, a lot of Russian um, skirmishes again. I think they're the Egerski out in front. They don't have a great uh, fire multiplier, only times two in skirmish order. Uh, but I thought I'd see just if they can do any damage to those French defences uh, or force a French response. Well, it has forced a response, but it's mainly been in the form of artillery. And uh, uh, French artillery has already caused some damage, some losses among um, that Russian avant-garde. These are the guys, of course, who suffered those heavy casualties in the previous evening's encounter. So they're already uh, back uh, serving as, as cannon fodder uh, for these, these Allied forces. The Prussians are moving through the Grosse Garden as fast as they can, um, but now they're within range of some of these French redoubts, and they are also... Sustaining some casualties, you can see the, uh, I think the Salesian Husses at the front there. And elsewhere, it is, I guess, relatively quiet. Again, Mesco moving his forces up uh, to the northwest. It's out in the far western flank of those uh, forces. I should mention, point out here, that... Um, this uh, cavalry of the right wing has now formed in line. I um, wasn't sure what to do with them, but um, that's what they've done. Um, some cavalry in column behind them. Uh, so this confrontation of cavalry here, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it, is, it is early for a big cavalry encounter like this. Uh, but the French really have pushed out quite far and that Allied cavalry is certainly trying to protect um, their forces out here in in the west so they don't want that French cavalry moving around too much. Um, I guess I'll just see what happens over the next hour or so. Um, but they are 500 yards apart from each other and certainly looking uh, to uh, to fight. <laughs> 